Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 8 of the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of instant chronic total occlusion. This was a patient with single vessel CTO of the right coronary artery that was due to instant restenosis. It was a fairly long occlusion from the mid RCA all the way to the crux in the PDA PLV bifurcation. He had a clear cup, it was fairly lengthy, and there were some collaterals coming from the LAD. The initial plan was to start with a cross post catheter that works pretty well for instant restenosis CTOs, followed by wires, and if it failed, do retrograde crossing. This is the cross post catheter that was advanced very easily through the instant occlusion and crossed all the way to the distal cup fairly quickly. This is an example of how the cross post can be fairly advantageous for chronic total occlusion due to stent restenosis. Then we were able to advance a guide wire to the PDA as confirmed from contralateral injection as well as orthogonal projection, so indeed we have a wire to the PDA. However, we had significant difficulty advancing a guide wire into the posterolateral vessel. Several wires were tried, including Pilot 200, including Gaia guide wires, however, could not cross. At some point, a decision was made to ignore the posterolateral and just stand the right coronary and the PDA. And as a result, stents were placed all the way from the distal RCA all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery, and the ostium was optimized with an osteal flush balloon. Following this, under great TB3 flow was restored all the way to the posterior descending artery. However, there remained poor flow into the posterolateral vessel. As a result, uh, we decided to attempt again to see if we can rewire and restore flow in the posterolateral vessel. We tried several wires, including the Gaia second, as well as a knuckled Fielder XT guide wire. And finally, a stiff wire, which, however, went some minimal. And then we eventually ended up using the Stingray balloon to re-enter. However, we had significant difficulty. We performed a balloon dilation into the posterolateral vessel. However, since we never quite achieved distal true lumen entry, we decided to leave it as an investment procedure. Don't place any stents into the posterolateral vessel but let the dissection heal and potentially bring the base back for a second procedure. So in summary, the cross post can be very useful for CTOs due to distant restenosis and can sometimes cross very well even through long term, long lengths of occlusion. However, when there is a bifurcation of the distal cap, crossing might lead to loss of patency of the other branch requiring separate crossing to restore patency of both of those branches. And in cases when re-entry fails and there remains dissection, it's best to not implant and stand, but instead just perform balloon angioplasty and let the dissections heal and bring the patient back in the future for a repeat crossing attempt into the distal true lumen. Thank you.